and it's a cool morning here in southern Idaho it's about 35 out the sun's out it's supposed to get uh, up to maybe 40 degrees so we're gonna open up the Alpine it's been sitting closed up now for just about a month since we winterized it and uh, we'll open up the slides uh, extend the awning we'll run the furnace for a few minutes and we'll run the overhead uh, AC fan units uh, I won't run the AC compressors uh, because we're on uh, uh, just uh, a 15 amp uh, service here at the house but uh, we'll run everything else for a few minutes and exercise it and one of the neighbors decided he wanted to uh, run his lawnmower and uh, vacuum up the leaves uh, in the yard if you noticed uh, as I was getting ready to step up I have an old towel laying down here even though I have a an entrance mat I use this towel and that catches the uh, frost and stuff uh, or grass or leaves off my feet uh, so that I don't track that in the Alpine uh, since it's all nice and cleaned up so we turned on a few lights as you can see all the shades are down uh, with the exception of the the one on the other side I have a big spruce tree that blocks most of the Sun so I leave that one up and then these on this side I keep down uh, when we have it stored and that keeps the ultraviolet light from the sun from coming in and uh, damaging the uh, the furniture and the paneling and everything else so let's go ahead and extend these slides and see if uh, everything works like it's supposed to and uh, bedroom slide is extending like she should and we'll come around here and if you hear a little squeak or such uh, you know it's 32 degrees out so Oh, Betsy might make a noise or two here as uh, the slides start to extend. And if you notice, this slide is extending first. It's uh, the closest one to the hydraulic pump. And then the other main slide on the opposite side will extend out. And we'll get that extended. And here just a little bit of squeak, but... Uh, not concerned about that so uh, got everything opened up looking pretty good and we'll just take a quick peek uh, inside the freezer compartment make sure that everything looks good and it does the freezer is uh, of course turned off uh, this is the old uh, Dometic RM1350 and everything looks good we have the little doorkeeper in place and this keeps the doors closed but partially cracked open and uh, you want to be gentle with these doors if you notice that uh, this one has a flap and if this flap gets broken or doesn't work right the lower section won't cool so uh, the key to longevity with these uh, Dometic ice boxes is a gentle hand when opening and closing and we'll take a quick look see up here in the bedroom everything looks uh, great looks just like we left it and uh, really do like those end tables they made for the wife plus the new uh, the new bed is just uh, a killer everything looks good in the bathroom if you notice the uh, shower nozzle is removed and this is laying in the sink that's because it's winterized and uh, i take these off when i winterize uh, if you don't you'll plug up these little holes with uh, the antifreeze when it uh, uh, crystallizes a little bit. Same thing with the sink faucet. And let's check the toilet, see if there's any antifreeze still in there. And there is, so everything is still good and winterized. So now we'll go outside and turn on the propane and uh, fire up the furnace and see if it works. I like to fire up the furnace and exercise it a little bit. Even though it's an auto change over Relay, I run it manually, and both tanks right now are closed. The, t the uh, lever is pointed to this tank, which means this is gonna be the primary tank. This is the secondary. This is the tank that we were running on when we finished our trip earlier this year, the uh, 1st of October up in Yellowstone. So we'll slowly open this tank up, and now we've got it open, and the valve changed to green. So now we'll go in and see if the suburban furnace will fire up. And I have the older Alpine with the uh, CCC2 thermostat. So we've turned the thermostat on, we woke it up, and I know that my furnace is on zone one. So we will switch over to furnace mode. 
we're 32 degrees temp inside and uh, now we have it set at furnace if you notice I had it set at heat pump we don't want that heat pump we want furnace now we'll go outside and see if the furnace fires up and now we have the furnace is running and we can feel air blowing out and you just heard it ignite and we've got nice hot air coming out already and nice cool air this is the intake side for the suburban this is the exhaust side that feels real good on the hands most of the newer alpines i think from 2015 and up they switched over to the dometic atwood i like the suburban furnace it's just personal preference but so we know the furnace is working and we'll let this run for a few minutes and exercise the furnace and you'll notice that my furnace vents are blocked with cardboard and that's a project that uh, I've been wanting to do for the last five or six years is uh, change the uh, the two pieces of cardboard you know I'm real high tech here in Idaho we use what we have available so cardboard was a, uh, uh, the uh, quickest cheapest thing to use but I figure after all these years uh, what I'm gonna do is is take these two wood grill covers off and I'm gonna make some uh, nice uh, covers with a, a door that lifts up I think a hinge on them a couple of hinges and uh, on both these and you'll hear a lot of debate on the furnace uh, uh, if your furnace sits in the basement and you have uh, grills like this on the stairs I block them off during the summertime when we're camping so that I don't get hot air coming in and if we're camping in the winter uh, they're blocked off so that I don't get cold air coming in so essentially they stay there all the time and in nine years I've never had a furnace over temp I've never had any issues and uh, I have a video out there that I show using uh, liquid smoke uh, that discusses all of this but uh, if you want to leave them open go ahead all you're doing is letting cold air come in and uh, your hot air goes right out those vents and it's not doing anything as far as the furnace, uh, furnace efficiency is concerned back to the furnace it will check vent there nice warm air and we'll come out here into the living room area i got to take this box inside because it's got a hf radio in it and we've already got nice hot air there and the carpet uh, that's maybe a project I do down the road too. You know, it's a 2014 Alpine, but uh, folks, when you look at the carpet, it's uh, as good now as it was uh, the day we bought the unit. And for the last nine years, uh, up until sadly this year, we had two chow dogs with us. Each of them weighed over 60 pounds and chows are double coated. So they have a lot of fur, but the rugs uh, uh, show no signs of wear and tear neither do the steps uh, and neither do uh, does up here inside uh, in the bedroom area so uh, we'll check uh, check a heater outlet up here just to make sure we're getting nice warm air we should be yep and we've got good air from both those so we'll let that furnace run for a few minutes and some people are going to say well why are you bothering to run the furnace when you've got it winterized and sitting there at the house and parked for the year and my hands are cold, so I almost dropped my phone. I don't want to do that. It's an iPhone uh, Pro, so I really don't need to break that. The reason I run this furnace once a month during the winter months, uh, even though we're not uh, using it and it's sitting here at the house, is uh, I am a firm believer <clears throat> in exercising things. And when I say exercising, uh, the furnace needs to be run. It's got a blower motor in there with uh, a squirrel cage on uh, one side and a, uh, a blower wheel on the other side that sits in the combustion section and those have bearings and they need to be uh, in my opinion they need to have a little exercise so the only way you can exercise that is to run the furnace and what that does is uh, it uh, lets that furnace heat up if there's uh, condensation inside in the combustion section uh, etc it, it burns all that out and dries it out exercises that lp valve the igniter and everything on the furnace and uh, it's just a good way to maintain operability so it's something you might want to consider one of the things that i am going to do uh, this spring after i get the uh, unit uh, dewinterized is we're going to change out this faucet assembly and it's a good faucet uh, it's a mowing 
we replaced this back in 2015 when the uh, original one broke but it, it's uh, never been up it was never up high enough uh, uh, for the wife uh, uh, and it didn't reach over enough so uh, Costco had a really great sale and uh, we picked up one of these nice uh, Kohler units it's uh, as you can see much uh, much taller and uh, it's just going to be a it's going to be a real nice unit when we get this put on for her. she's going to like this a lot and we'll get this installed in the spring and we'll show you what that looks like but it's uh, it's going to probably you know it's going to reach up uh, oh, about yay high and it'll give her more travel over here into the other sink and of course everybody you know uh, says uh, why didn't they uh, drill the the hole in the center i don't know who knows why keystone does what they do sometimes and i'm also i've got a a nice nickel finished cover plate and we're going to go ahead and remove this soap dispenser entirely and put the cover plate over and, and eliminate this because it's a useless piece of junk this will be a nice uh, project when it warms up i'd do it now but i have everything uh, winterized so i, I don't want to mess up the uh, the winterizing that we've done so this might be something you want to look at it's a real nice unit. It's normally like almost 200 bucks, uh, and we got it on sale for 139 bucks, and it's a, a very nice unit. Uh, so I think uh, we'll like uh, Kohler mix up uh, pretty good stuff. So I think we'll we'll be happy with that. She'll be happy with it. In other words, I'm still running the furnace. I might as well turn this uh, fancy new Samsung TV on. The, uh, the remote that they give with these new TVs, I mean, it's, uh, there isn't much to it, but it's, uh, for an old fart like me, it's complicated uh, uh, sometimes, but, you know, I can turn it on, so we'll at least see if the TV set comes on, and yep, everything's looking good there, so I don't have any feed set up right now, but uh, I just thought I'd check that TV out, and We'll just turn that back off and leave well enough alone for right now. But, uh, boy, these remotes, they get smaller and smaller, and you can actually do quite a bit with this little remote. I'm, I'm quite impressed. We also have the, the Bose, uh, the original Bose uh, sound bar in it. And it still works, uh, you know, pretty good. We do have uh, DirecTV, and we do have a Sony Blu-ray DVD player, but I've been looking at these sound bars that are out, and uh, they make one that would uh, fill up from about here all the way over to, to here, and uh, with a very small uh, remote subwoofer that you can place anywhere, because with uh, subwoofers, the bass sound uh, is not directional, so you could put that just about anywhere, and I think we might uh, enjoy that a lot more thought about doing it earlier in the year but we just had so much going on and uh, so uh, we got the new tv installed we were very happy with it and uh, the uh, articulated mount on it uh, has been very very good have not had any had not had any issues with the articulated mount that i put on uh, uh, you can we can pull this tv out uh, oh, almost uh, well i'll show you with the new uh, articulated mount that I installed, you can see now that uh, I have that extended uh, almost a foot away from uh, where it sits in. And our two recliners are sitting over here. And so what's nice now is that we can actually pivot this TV set way over like this so that both of us have a really good viewing angle and uh, we're not worried about anybody viewing the tv from this side because nobody's sitting there and uh, i may get rid of this couch yet too it's uh, something i've uh, been considering thinking about but another project for another day give you one more look at the articulated mount and uh, they used to just have just a, a plain plate with a small arm and uh, you had about four inches of swivel on it and that was about it and the viewing angle when you were sitting in these chairs over here, the viewing angle sucked. And uh, now we've got a great viewing angle. And I've made sure that I have retracted the TV set back so that when I bring the slides in, you don't have one of those oh golly gee moments and uh, really uh, create a mess that you didn't want. We've run that furnace for three or four minutes, so we'll go up and turn the furnace off. It's uh, 
working just like it should. And now we'll turn the fans on on the uh, AC units and let the fan run. And we'll just switch it to high and we'll go into uh, zone two and we'll turn that fan on if I remember which button to press and there we go so we have the zone one which is the rear or main living room area that fan is running and the fan just came on in here for the bedroom so we'll let these run for just a minute or two exercise those bearings on the uh, the fan and uh, just keep things in good working order. I'm a believer in uh, uh, if you let thing, things sit too long and don't use them, uh, sometimes when you do need to use them, they don't work. So just little tips uh, for those of you when you winterize. And we'll just take a quick check. Uh, I don't have a fancy high-tech panel like you guys do with the end command, but uh, we'll just take a quick look, see all the tanks show empty. And the battery shows that uh, it's charging, it's in the green, it's charged, and all that's telling me is that the converter's working. Really doesn't tell me anything about the battery because what that's really reading is uh, what's coming off the converter. One of these days, maybe I'll uh, put an actual uh, 12 volt gauge up here with an amp meter on it and a shunt so that uh, I can actually read the, uh, the battery voltage and the current uh, in real time if I desired to. Okay, we've let those run for a couple of minutes and that's probably good enough for that. So we'll turn everything back off. And we've turned everything back off and now we'll put the thermostat back off and then in a minute or so the blue light will go off and the thermostat will go back to sleep. Did have some rain and uh, stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and extend the awning since it's warm enough out that I think I can safely do that. And we don't have too much wind and you can probably see some moisture dripping off of the uh, the slide and so we'll get that extended and I see we already have a couple little uh, dark streaks from the, uh, the moisture since it's been closed up that'll come off real easy a little bit of Dawn dish soap uh, and a long handle brush and I'll have that cleaned off in about two minutes but we'll leave this awning out uh, for a little bit and let it dry you, there is uh, moisture on all of it. You might be able to see it if I zoom in. Yeah, there's the water droplets. So we'll let all this dry for probably half an hour. Of course, I want to remember to come back and turn the tank off. So we'll turn the tank off. And I know this is the tank I've been operating from. This tank is full. I'm, uh, I am got it uh, pointed to that tank. So this is primary. If I had this tank open also, then when this tank would empty. I don't have to move the lever or anything, but this tank is gonna automatically start feeding. This indicator is gonna be red. The bad thing about running it this way is you have no idea that this that uh, this tank is empty if you don't check it every day. And you have no idea that you're feeding off of this tank. And so if you're not careful, you'll find yourself with no propane and both tanks empty. So that's why when I run, I run uh, in manual, I select whichever tank that I'm going to use, be it this the primary or this one the primary. And when the tank runs out, I come out here, close the tank off, switch the selector to the, the new primary tank, and open the valve. That way I know I'm never out of propane. And we'll take a quick look see in the basement. I don't see any issues in the basement. No problems there. Everything looks good as far as we can see. There's no water laying around, so everything has been doing good so far for the first month of uh, being winterized. We'll take a look in the compartment in here, and I always leave a couple of paper towels laying down in here. That way, if, if there is an antifreeze leak, because everything is serviced with RV antifreeze, I'll know it because uh, these rags will be pinkish in color. So we don't see anything, and that's good. That's what we want to see. And while we're here, we'll just take a quick look-see at the bottom of the bedroom slide covering. And uh, nine years old now, and so far that material has held up real good. And we've changed the exterior wiper seals uh, once or twice uh, on this Alpine. I changed a couple uh, on it this year. 
and everything looks good. I've already looked at the other side, so no sense boring you with that. Take a quick look, see up underneath the uh, passenger side, driver's side slide. The Darko still looks good after nine years, so really can't complain with that. And we'll come around to the passenger side slide and we'll take a look at the Darko covering there. And everything looks good. And if you look up here, this is the UHMW strips that I installed. Uh, this makes two years now since I've installed these. And this was to cover some worn area. These uh, UHMW strips have worked perfectly. I've not had any issues. And yes, if somebody asks, the screws are countersunk so they don't eat into anything. And you can see that everything is uh, as slick as a whistle, just like it's supposed to be. We don't see any hydraulic leaks. Everything looks good. There's the hydraulic cylinder. There's no fluid there. Everything is nice and clean. So, And uh, the slide seal on this side looks great. Looks good on the front part of it too. Okay, we've got everything safely closed up again. Got the new faucet laying there that we'll get back to uh, in a month, uh, or not in a month, probably in uh, mid-April, we'll uh, actually be able to come out and dewinterize, and then we'll put that faucet in for the wife. And now that we've got the slides in, the last thing that I do, and I do this once a month in the winter time, even if there's snow on the ground, uh, if it's cold out, I like to wait till the sun gets up and usually, you know, even though we got snow on the ground later on, it'll get up to 30 degrees or so, maybe a little bit warmer. And uh, that's well within the operating temperatures of the hydraulic slide or the hydraulic uh, leveling system. And what I like to do is uh, retract the levelers and uh, then re-extend them and uh, do a fresh auto level. I like to do that once a month. It uh, moves that fluid around uh, through the pump through the hydraulic lines and through the hydraulic pistons on the slides as well. And what I carry is, uh, I carry a bottle of uh, motorcycle fork oil. You could use AW32 oil or you could use ATF fluid, but uh, I will wipe each one of these leveler legs down first before I retract them and then re-extend them. And then a lot of people are gonna say, well, why are you gonna do that? Well, I like to get the, if you look at this cylinder, We've had a couple of windstorms in here and you can see that there's a little bit of dirt and dust on that. And so if I retract that up in there, all I'm gonna do is pull all that crap right up into uh, this lower wiper seal right here that you may or may not be able to see. And I uh, apologize for the lawnmower. So we'll put a little bit of, of this motorcycle fork oil on the, the end of the rag. Just gently wipe it down. If you notice, there's not a lot, just a little bit of a coating. And we'll do this to all, all six of these, and then uh, we'll retract everything, and then do a fresh auto level. Okay, we've got the leveler legs. They're all wiped down, all six of them. And these leveler legs are nine years old, and you can look and see that the piston on them looks as good and clean and shiny as the day that. Uh, they installed them uh, at the factory. So if you keep these things wiped down, like you see me doing before you retract and uh, you exercise them once a month, if they're stationary or stowed for the winter or whatnot, uh, you'll find that your leveling system, uh, cylinders, lines and pump and everything, solenoid valves, high deck valves, you'll find that all those things will work and be uh, much more reliable than if you let it sit there for five or six months and don't do anything. Okay, so now the magic test. Let's see if the old Lippert uh, panel comes to life, and it did. And let's just take a look, see, and see what it says for system voltage. And we're showing 13.6. So that's the power coming off the converter. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into manual mode right there, and we will hit enter. And we're going to hit the retract, and we'll go ahead and retract all of these uh, mid and rear leveler legs. And uh, once I get these all retracted, then uh, we'll retract the front landing gear. Okay, we've got the mid and rears uh, all pulled up, and we'll go ahead and retract the front landing gear. And we'll drop the nose down 
pretty low down to the ground as you can see and what we're doing is exercising that fluid and we'll stop there and we'll turn off the retract and we'll just shut the unit off for a second and of course now you can see the the alpine is nose down and back end is high and of course you want to do this with all your slides fully retracted and closed you don't want to be messing around with your leveling system with your slides extended okay so the nose is, is way low mid and rear levelers are retracted and what we're going to do is we're going to come back over and we're going to turn on the leveling system and we're going to manually extend the front if i tried to do an auto level with that nose dipped all the way down like that I can tell you right now that you're going to get an unsuccessful auto level. You're going to have all kind of errors and issues. So what you always want to do before you go to do an auto level is you want to raise your nose so that it is slightly above level. And again, the mid and rear levelers are retracted, but we're going to, we're going to go ahead and raise that nose just a little bit more. Make sure that uh, it's got a good upward slope to it. And you want to do this when you're unhitching from your fifth wheel or from your pickup truck and uh, you're going to do an auto level. If you try to do an auto level and the nose is below level, nine out of ten times it's probably going to fail. It might do a successful auto level every once in a while, but not very often. So we'll go ahead and turn the control panel back off. And now what we're going to do is turn the control panel on. We'll hit the auto level you can see the nose is going down that's what we want it to do and it says grounding and it's going to come back upwards now because we found a negative value as it dropped the nose and we'll go around here and just take a look at the amp meter and see how many amps of current that we're drawing uh, when this pump motor runs so you can see 60 amps almost let's switch to a different scale so it'll actually read it so we're reading 67 amps right now of current. And that's uh, just the front, uh, or that's the driver's side uh, mid and rear level is working. Now the passenger side mid and rear leveler legs are working. You can see that's over 50 amps of current because it's cold outside. Now we're up to 60 because it's actually lifting a little weight now. And the front end is gonna make one more adjustment. And of course, you got the lawnmower running in the background too. You saw almost 80 amps there when it was doing a front to back. There's 69 amps. And we got a successful auto level. And we have no hydraulic leaks. I already looked on the other side. So let's go into manual mode and see what it says for front to back is at negative 0.1 side to side is negative 0.1 that's exactly where I set it at and let's take a look at the voltage now 13.5 so everything was good we'll turn the level up panel off and uh, that completes a full auto level with the retraction and everything wiping these cylinders down uh, we've moved that fluid around quite a bit uh, through those hydraulic lines through the pistons and that will ensure that your uh, Lippert uh, or equalizer system, hydraulic system, it'll keep either one of those systems in much better shape, in my opinion, than if you simply let your fifth wheel sit there for months on end and never exercise the system. Now we'll leave the uh, awning open for a little bit longer since the sun is out. We don't have too much wind. We'll leave the door open, get a little more fresh air exchanged in and out through the Alpine. But uh, anyways, hopefully that... Uh, was worth watching and uh, I do this once a month like say even if there's snow on the ground I do this and I'm a firm believer that it's uh, why nine years later uh, next year will be the 10th year of using this Alpine and it's uh, I'm a firm believer that's why in 10 years this Alpine works as good 10 years later as it did the day that we bought it take care and uh, that's all you get from the Alpine guy out here in Idaho